It is now February of the year 2023, but election denialism is still very much alive and well. And with the prospect of a presidential election on the horizon, it has the potential to get worse. To confront the hundreds of election deniers who are still out there, elections officials across the country are now leading the charge to combat misinformation about election integrity. According to The Washington Post, in Arizona, the new Democratic attorney general has repurposed a unit that, under her predecessor, focused on election fraud, and it will now focus on voting rights and ballot access. In Michigan, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson is working to toughen penalties against those who threaten elections officials. Benson is also drafting legislation that would make it a crime to knowingly spread misinformation about elections, comparing the legislation to laws barring deceptive marketing practices. The way Benson sees it, individuals who intentionally spread misinformation that then leads to threats, or worse, targeting elections officials, are just as culpable and should be held culpable just as those who are actually exercising the threats themselves. Down in North Carolina, the Board of Elections is considering the removal of county elections official who, without evidence of irregularities, refused to certify the 2022 midterm results. After more than two years of unabashed election denialism, the cavalry is coming to combat the big lie at the state level, which, if you like democracy, is highly anticipated and also probably very good news. Joining us now to help us figure out whether it is indeed good news is Mark Elias, voting rights attorney and founder of Democracy Docket. Mark, thanks for making the time. Um, how heartened are you by these measures that are being announced at the state level across the country? So look, I think they're an important first step, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. As you said, we have been having election denialism for two years, and at each stage, we have thought, well, it will get better. You know, after Donald Trump loses, it'll get better. After he litigates his 65 cases and loses them, it'll get better. Certainly after Republicans witness the, the violent insurrection at the nation's capital, the fever will break and it will get better. After they lose the midterms, it has to get better. But the fact is, it's not getting better. So I am happy to see that Democratic election officials and Democratic office holders are pushing back. But I think we need to be very realistic about the threats that we face. They are persistent, they are escalating, and they are coming from one side of the aisle. What about, I mean, enforcing some of these laws? First, there's a question of how you enforce them, right? Like it, Benson's uh, legislation making it a crime to knowingly spread misinformation about elections. Is that enforceable? And then there's the sort of counter argument that the more you punish folks like this, the more a kind of almost, the more it makes them dig in their heels, right? The more, at least when you talk about misinformation on social media, you, you try and you try and censor it, you try and, you know, prevent it from spreading and, it, and the virus finds its way to another host. So, I mean, when we talk about efficacy, yeah. where do you grade these things? Yeah, so look, I think that the, it's hard for me to address the speech content stuff because it is tricky with the First Amendment. I'd want to see what the texts are. But there are things that we can do to really push back against that election denialism. You know, you said that there that the bill is aimed at people who provide misinformation. It's not people, it's Republicans. The election official in, in North Carolina was a Republican. Like, we need to be able to acknowledge that this is a not a bipartisan problem. The problem we have is that one party is hijacking a system of elections that rely on bipartisanship, right? They rely on Democrats and Republicans certifying elections together. They rely on Democrats and Republicans observing elections together. And they assume that at the end of the day, everyone has a common interest in seeing that the accurate results are tabulated and certified and put forward. But that just isn't the case. So the measures I think we need to focus on are the ones that are that that sort of do away with the nostalgia of the pageantry of democracy that once was and focuses on the challenges of democracy that are today. They focus on making sure that county officials have to certify elections whether they like the results or not. And if they don't, they will get sued. And if necessary, they will go to jail. Like, we need to be much more intentional about bringing to bear the, the resources and the, the, the steps necessary to enforce the laws to make sure every ballot is counted and accurately certified. Do you think at this point it matters if any of these um, new laws are put into place 
that any of them have Republican support. Does that matter at this point if you have a Republican uh, state attorney general uh, or attorney general that is, is willing to sort of go out on a limb here and try and reform a broken system as far as the party and misinformation? No, I don't. And that's actually one of the things that, that is always frustrating to me. Right now, Alex, as we sit here, there are 17 states. More than half of the American public lives in a state that is where that has a Democratic trifecta, which means it's a Democratic governor and Democratic legislature. Those legislatures and governors can act uh, in concert to implement these provisions. They won't target target every um, battleground state, every swing state, but they will create a momentum and a standard just in the way in which DeSantis and his cronies have acted in partisan fashion to create standards on the other side. So I don't think we should be wringing our hands trying to find some magical unicorn Republican. We should be moving forward with the business at hand. There are no unicorns. Mark Elias, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate your time. Thank you.